Okay, story time. This is the story of a fast food chain. Not one of the ones you've heard of. They've got a bunny in a business suit as their mascot. This was a pretty typical fast food chain. They served burgers and fries and carbonated sugar water and milkshakes. Milkshakes didn't make up a significant percentage of their revenue, but every year they did a promotion. Around the middle of March, the Ides of March, if you like, they would make a mint flavored milkshake and they would sell it for a week or two. It didn't sell that well, but it was a good marketing campaign. It brought people into the store and it meant they sold a little bit more of their other products at that time as well. One year, right before the promotion was going to start, the supplier they used for their mint flavored milkshake solution went out of business. Now, did the fast food chain freak out? No, they worked the problem. They found another supplier at the 11th hour. They swapped it out. The promotion went on as normal. But this year they noticed something a little bit different. First of all, they sold quite a few more of these milkshakes, maybe, maybe 50% more. The other thing is that as the promotion ended, they started getting a lot of emails and mail from people demanding that this milkshake be made available all year round. Every year they've gotten a little bit of this, but this year it was a lot. 10 times what they've ever seen before. And some of it sounded pretty loud and pretty rude. These people really wanted this milkshake back, but it faded away after a couple of weeks. But it made them think, well, maybe this is an opportunity. So the next year, in a couple of their markets, they decided to try an experiment. In these markets, they decided they were going to run this promotion for two months instead of just the week they normally did. And something quite surprising happened. As they did this, they actually saw that sales of this mint flavored milkshake actually climbed over the entire eight week period that they ran this promotion. So what the heck was happening? They had no idea. It still represented only a small, tiny percentage of their overall revenue because it was just in a few test markets. But in those test markets, it was starting to make up a big chunk of the money these stores were making. So with this data, they decided to do something new. They added their mint flavored milkshake to their menu full time all year round. They still didn't really know what was going on, but they knew that there was demand here. The reality is, is that the data gathering at their various stores was pretty minimal. They knew how much of each product they were selling, but they didn't know to who or when or really any other information. But they decided to go ahead with this change to their menu. They did this. Now the milkshake is available 365 days a year. And what do they see? Like they saw in the test markets, they saw that sales of this milkshake climbed and climbed and climbed. They reached a plateau after a few months. But at this point, in most of their stores, in most of their regions, sales of this milkshake was actually outstripping the rest of their product put together. They didn't know why, but no sense overanalyzing. High fives all around. The business was booming. They were making tons and tons of money. But some of the stores started reporting some things. Even though the restaurants were making way more money, the traffic was actually about the same as it always was. There wasn't a lot of data gathered on this, but this was something that some of the store managers were reporting. The other thing they noticed was that the geographic distribution of these sales wasn't consistent with the sales of their other products. Some places that they used to have relatively weak sales suddenly were booming. Other places, the milkshake just wasn't really catching up. Well, this is amazing. They've managed to increase their sales dramatically. This became their model. Now, someone had the idea to maybe try to start figuring out what exactly was happening. So they they changed their point of sale software so they could report exactly which people were ordering which food. They started recording who ate in the restaurant as opposed to taking takeout or going through the drive through And they started gathering all this data. As they kept looking, they discovered that most of the time, people who were buying this mint flavored milkshake, that's all they were buying. In fact, often they were coming in and they were buying four or five or six mint flavored milkshakes 
milkshakes and nothing else. And the sales of these mint flavored milkshakes was almost always through the drive through or takeout. Rarely did these people stay in the restaurant. And that's why some of the managers were reporting that their restaurant traffic hadn't changed because a very small number of people were buying all of these milkshakes and they weren't even staying in the restaurant. Now, they still don't know what's going on, but they're a publicly traded company and profit matters to publicly traded companies, but something else matters too, and that's margin. And they started thinking, well, if we have a group of people that are buying tons of product and they're not using our restaurants and they're not buying our other products, maybe we're wasting our time with some of these other products. Some of these things like the hamburgers, you know, they require special equipment, they require special people, and they're not making up as big of a percentage of our revenue as they used to. So they started to scale back on that part of the business. They were still doing it. People still wanted to have a burger now and then, but they were squeezing the margins of this part of the business to make the business look more profitable. They were actually making less money in some cases by doing so, but the margins were better and the street loved that. Stock price through the roof. So in a few places, they shrunk the restaurants down. They made the fry portion smaller. They took a few menu items off because all of these things reduced their costs, reduced their overhead. So they've made all these changes. They've transformed their business and they still don't really know what's going on. What was happening here? Well, they finally, after all this time, it had been about a year now, they decided maybe it was time to dig into the data a little bit more and maybe gather some data that wasn't coming through in their sales sheets. And when they did this, what they found was that sales of their normal products was largely unchanged. Their demographics remained the same. But now layered on top of it was this new group that was buying these mint flavored milkshakes. Some of them overlapped with their old demographic, but some of them did not. And one thing that stuck out of the data was that most of the people buying large numbers of milkshakes were redheads. And that explained the geographic distribution because different regions of the world have different numbers of redheads. But now these milkshakes were making so much money that they represented a huge percentage of this business revenue. And because they were so profitable, they represented an even higher percentage of the company's profitability. So as public companies do, they started to optimize for that profitability. They opened up special kiosks in places where they could sell milkshakes and they didn't really sell any other products. All they sold were these milkshakes. They started to make their burgers smaller and smaller to save on costs because the milkshakes represented an ever increasing percentage of their business. And most importantly, they started to focus their customer acquisition on this redhead group because they knew that those customers represented the greatest potential profitability because they would buy their highest margin item in huge amounts. And they started ignoring all of the other customer segments that they understood. Now remember, they still don't really understand what's going on. So finally, they started to try to figure out why were these milkshakes so appealing to redheads? What's going on here? So they had chemistry labs and research groups starting to pick apart the milkshake ingredients and try to figure something out. And they ran different tests to try to see why it was particularly attractive to redheads. And at first they didn't really find anything, but eventually, yes, they did isolate a chemical that was produced by the interaction of this milkshake solution with their milkshake machines that produced a chemical that was particularly addictive for redheads. So now they're thinking, well, that's interesting. This is a problem maybe, or is this an opportunity? Because now we understand what's going on. But of course, as a publicly traded company, a company that had spent the last several years changing their business to be dependent upon the income from this product targeting redheads, they decided they couldn't walk away. They decided this wasn't a problem. This was an opportunity. This knowledge allowed them to refine their formula, refine their marketing, refine their product to target those redheads even better to get them to buy 
even more. And the business started to transform more fully. The restaurants became focused on mint flavored milkshakes. The rest of the menu started to thin out further and further as they got rid of most of the other items on their menu because now they were able to sell massive amounts of product to just a few people because they would come in and buy 10 milkshakes. Whereas normally someone would come in and spend four or five bucks on a hamburger. You're getting people spending 40 bucks in one go. They didn't even really need the restaurants anymore because people would come buy their milkshakes and then they would leave. So the restaurants got smaller, the decor got cheaper, and they kept selling these milkshakes. Now the other fast food restaurants weren't sitting idly by. They were watching this company increase its profit, increase its margins, and they were desperate to follow suit. So they experimented with different things. Some companies installed milkshake machines that made no difference. Some people stumbled across formulas that were different that targeted people with different colored hair, maybe chocolate sundaes. Others were able to duplicate what this company was doing. And then as they found their own targets, the story was roughly the same. They started focusing more and more on their target demographics that were buying large numbers of their products and they started under supporting the rest of their business. Other people started noticing that this restaurant seemed to be selling an awful lot of mint flavored milkshakes and in really weird patterns. You had these redheaded whales spending hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars on milkshakes and the old clientele, the restaurant was largely gone. And they started to ask if this was a problem and the company pushed back. There was nothing technically illegal in the substance of this milkshake. It was not a narcotic, at least not based upon the way narcotics were defined. People had the choice not to buy these milkshakes. And for a long time, that argument held. It certainly didn't hurt that the company had a lot more money to throw behind its side of the argument. People could choose to buy or not buy these milkshakes. It wasn't the responsibility of the restaurant to regulate that interaction. Then people started dying, as you would expect if you're drinking 10 mint flavored milkshakes a day. And now regulators started wondering if something needed to be done. But these days, regulators are very slow to act and definitely listen very closely when corporations tell them that they're not doing anything wrong. So for a little bit longer, nothing was done. Now remember, this was happening across the entire fast food industry. Our bunny in a business suit restaurant may have been first, but the other restaurants, the other public corporations couldn't let this opportunity for massive high margin profitability go unchased. So the entire industry had shifted, become dependent upon this kind of revenue. And people who just wanted to go to a fast food through joint and have some burgers and some fries, those options seem to still be out there, but actually they were getting worse and worse because all of these fast food restaurants were jumping on the bandwagon and trying to target these different groups. And the normal fast food experience was degrading as a result. Now, what's the end to this story? I guess it remains to be seen. Regulators are looking at these milkshakes and wondering if something needs to be done. Consumers are starting to notice that the restaurant restaurants they used to know aren't as good as they used to be. They seem to be focused on this very specific menu item and targeting a customer that isn't them anymore. And that's why you should care about the way the games you play make money. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. If you found it entertaining, hit that thumbs up button, share it with someone else. A special thanks to my members. They help keep this channel running. If you are interested in becoming a member, there's a link at the bottom of the description. I will see you again soon. Thank you.